working on the pipes. You were supposed to be done with this an hour ago. Yeah, Mr. Dung, sorry about that. I promise I'll be done in a second. Promise? Listen, Tom, you're a good kid, but you're terrible when it comes to promises. Almost as bad as you are at plumbing. You've been working for me since Tuesday, and you've been promising this and that, but you end up doing nothing. Oh, come on. Cut me some slack, Mr. Dung. I'm new at this. At least I'm trying. Trying ain't enough. You busted every single pipe we work with this week. I should have you fired. But I'm a nice guy, so I'm going to give you one more chance. Listen, these rich people, they want their plumbing done at 3. It's 250, I right? Got it? Yes, sir. And hey, you better not lose any water from those pipes, all right? If I see a puddle, I know it was you. Water don't just fall from the sky, all right? Okay, maybe it does, but you know what I mean. I'll be back in 10. I was looking in the truck. There's only two hot dogs. There's supposed to be three of them. You eat one of my dogs. Wait a second. Either you sweating like a mad dog, or you let some water out them pipes. What'd I tell you? What? No, Mr. Dung. Listen, I heard what you said, and I fixed the pipes. These things are good as new. All right, that's it. You're fired, and you owe me a hot dog. I'll get my stuff. You got fired again? Yeah. This is the third time this month. You're jumping around jobs like a pinball machine. At least I hope they're not suing you for pipe damage or something. No, nah, everything's cool. Mr. Dung talked to the owners and worked it all out. I just had to buy him a hot dog. That sucks, dude. I really wish I could help. Yeah, I kinda had it coming. It was only a matter of time before something blew up in my face. That's the same thing you used to say in college. Yeah, it's crazy. A couple months ago, we were just chilling in our dorms. Now you got a cool office job and I'm just cleaning toilets. Don't say it like that, Tom. How about this? Maybe I could pull some strings for you and get you a job at the office. Seriously? Well, it's not guaranteed or anything. The boss is the one who makes the decision in the end, but I'm kind of his right-hand man. I'm sure he'll listen to me. I gotcha, I gotcha. When should I come by? Meet me at the office tomorrow at 10.30. Should I wear a fancy suit like you do? <laughs> Shirt and tie should be fine. And Tom? Yeah? Please. Please don't do anything stupid. Phil, well, now you're just asking a little too much of me. Hey, five minutes early, not bad, but what are you wearing? It's business casual, perfect for a business, right? That's, that's not how business casual works. Uh, never mind. You have a tie though, at least, right? Yeah, definitely. I came prepared. Good. The boss is kind of a stickler when it comes to dress code, but you know what they say. The clothes make the man, right? Well, clothes aren't everything, I guess. Let's get inside. We don't want to be late. And this is the office, where I work. This place is, uh, it's quiet. Well, that's usually how it is around here. Let me introduce you to someone. This is Bert. He's in charge of supplies. Oh, okay. Hey, I'm Tom. It's nice to meet you. Oh, no, no, I, I'm okay. I, I've got a couple. So, uh, is he usually out of it like that? Most of the time. I haven't seen Bert leave the desk since Wednesday. It's Monday. Exactly. <coughs> okay, listen, Tom, this guy's the boss. But there's nothing to worry about. Just make a good impression and be yourself. Actually, don't be yourself. Just be normal. He's the top banana? Is he tough? You could say that. Uh, more 
Burn and Mr. Uh, and Death. It is pronounced Death, my boy. It is Russian, you see. Ah, uh, I see. So, this is the employee that you recommend, Philip. Yes, sir. He's a good college friend of mine. All right. So, according to your resume... You gave him a resume? Yeah, of course. You worked in a bank? Yes. That went bankrupt? Yes. And you helped part-time at the firehouse, which caught fire soon after you started working there. Well, at least he's honest. Thomas, please interrupt me if I'm stretching a bit too far, but you seem like the type of person that encourages tomfoolery in the workplace. One mistake is a mistake, but seven... Uh, eight. You're not helping. Eight mistakes are not mistakes. They are carelessness. And I will have you know, I am not one for carelessness. But I trust Philip's opinion. And frankly, I pity you. Thank you. But know this, Thomas. If you step out of line just once, you will never get another job as long as you live. I will make sure of it. All right, Mr. D, thank you for your time. I'll show him to his desk. Come on, Tom. This is where you'll be working. Well, uh, it'll be a pleasure working for you, sir. Dude, did you really send in a resume? You have to be kidding. What were you thinking? I know, I know, but he was going to find out about that stuff anyway. I mean, the fire department is still calling me about that microwave. You burnt the firehouse down with their microwave? I thought it was fireproof. Whatever. Just enjoy the new desk. No microwave included. Ooh, I could get used to this. All right, Tom, I got an easy job for you. All you have to do is organize these files alphabetically and stamp the date on them. So like A to Z? Yeah, you got it. All right, cool. Wait, what should I do after? Oh, no, 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 this'll take you a while. I'm gonna go finish some paperwork, but I'll be back. Hey Tom, are you okay? I never want to think about the alphabet again. So, your first week wasn't great, but... Phil, not great? It was terrible. Don't worry about the papers, Tom. They were just copies. We can make more. It's not about the papers. It's just... This isn't the kind of job I saw myself doing. Well, what did you see yourself doing? I don't know. Just something useful. I want to help people, not just be someone who stacks their papers. Tom, sometimes we do jobs we don't like, but we get used to them. Why do we have to settle? Remember when we were kids? Yeah, now those were the days. We were such nerds. I don't think I stopped reading comic books until we graduated high school. Remember what they told us? That you could be anything you wanted to be? Why is that any different now? Because this is the real world, Tom. If you still think it's the little perfect world we grew up believing it was, then you're just stuck in a comic book dream. Well, maybe comic book dreams aren't so bad. Don't worry, I'll get you home quick. Tom, sometimes we do jobs we don't like, but we get used to them. Why do we have to settle? Remember, remember what they told us? That you could be anything you wanted to be? Why is that any different now? Because this is the real world, Tom. Then you're just stuck in a comic book dream. Comic book dream. Comic book dream. Hey, Bert, you seen Tom today by any chance? You, you need a pencil? No, no, I'm good. Thanks. He better have a good reason for being late.
Hey, Phil. No, I won't be in today. I'm a little busy. Prior commitment? You could say that. Are you stuck in that tree? Don't worry, office man will save you. Don't fret, I'll be back in a moment. Tom! I'm sorry, citizen, I think you have me confused with someone else. I don't know what this is about, but you're lucky Mr. Deeth isn't here today. What, what, what is with the cape? You really saw through the disguise? Impressive. I'm an undercover superhero. Undercover superhero. Do I have to tell you how stupid that sounds? You should be working. I am working. I'm saving a cat who's stuck in a tree. What's more important than that? That's not what I meant. Don't worry, Phil. I'll finish my paperwork tomorrow. But right now, that cat needs me. Tom, no, get back here. What are you doing? You need to work. What are you? No, what? All right, buddy, I got you. Just keep still. Oh, oh bad kitty, bad, bad kitty. Get, get off. Get off. Bad kitty. Yo, red cape dude. You like seeing my cat around here? Yes, citizen. He's right here. Oh no. Oh, oh, not, not again. Bad, bad kitty. Oh. Whoa, he really likes you, red cape man. Hey everyone, uh, I found the stepladder outside. I don't know who left it, but there's a thank you note, so I'll just leave that right here for you guys. Cool. Everybody knows your office man. Tom, I had to do all your paperwork last night. Wow, really? Thanks. But I won't do it again. You can't just skip out on your job. I know if I don't show up to work at least once in a while, people are going to start to think I'm Office Man. What? I thought about it yesterday. As long as people see Office Man and I in the same day at least once, nobody's going to draw the connection. You know you made the news today, right? Are you serious? What did it say? Let me show you. You know what this says? Cape dumbass endangers animals. And feral cat population increases. I knew it, something was not right with that cat yesterday. You're missing the point. Maybe Office Man does a little more harm than good? No way, this town needs a superhero. Look at this, office building thefts continue. Don't you know about this? Yeah, of course, it's been happening for months. Well, check this out. I found a pattern in the robberies last night. You can't be serious. No, 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 hear me out. Whoever's breaking into the office departments is doing it in a pattern. Listen, two months ago, they broke into the marketing department. Then one month ago, they broke into accounting and financing. So you think they're going for this department next? That's exactly what I think. So why tell me this? Why not bring it up with Mr. Deeth? I already did, but he said I wasn't focusing on my job. Huh, I wonder why. Come on, aren't you a little curious? Why should I be? If Mr. Deeth says everything's fine, then everything's fine. But if I'm right, maybe I could catch these guys as office man. Tom, enough with office man. It might have been funny the first time, but it's getting old. And if you keep this up, you're begging for trouble. But wait, hear me out. Just please do your job. <laughs> Don't worry. I will.
I got you! Put your hands up! Mr. Deeth? Sir, I was looking for the robber. What are you doing here? The robber? Thomas, who let you into the building? Uh, nobody did, sir. Just what I thought. To think, I come here to file some paperwork and I find an employee snooping around. Thomas, I warned you about this. I never should have trusted Philip's opinion. I will need to have a talk with him tomorrow. No! This is all my fault. If anyone should get in trouble for this, it should be me. Well said. In that case, you're fired. I'm fired? You really did not see that coming. Thomas, if anyone knows what it is like to be fired, it is you. I'll get my things. No, no, I would not have you do that. Please come in tomorrow and get your things out by 10 o'clock. Besides, I want the employees to see you. It will give them a good example of what not to be like. What are you waiting for? A restraining order? Get out. Oh, hey. Hey, Tom. So, uh, anything new today? Not really. Bert's not in today, but he'll be back tomorrow. You have a lot of packing to do? No, not much. I barely had anything on the desk anyway. Don't worry, Tom. We all do stupid things. Stupid? Yeah, well, that office man joke went a little too far. It wasn't stupid, and it wasn't a joke. I really had a hunch. Well, your hunch almost got me fired. I got reprimanded by Mr. Deeth this morning. Phil, I told him it was my fault. And that it was my idea? I know, he told me. What did he tell you? Last night, you tried to blame the whole thing on me. And you believe him? Mr. Deeth might not be a nice guy, but he's not a liar. Well, he doesn't have to be a good one. You believe everything that comes out of that guy's mouth. That's how you keep a job, Tom. I wouldn't expect you to understand that. What are you trying to say? What do you think I'm trying to say? You haven't grown up one bit since we were kids. It's really sad to see that. And it's sad to see that you've become such a lapdog. You can put your dignity in here, along with the cape. I'll tell you, it was a close call last night. No, really. The kid almost found out about our plan. Are you kidding? Cameras? I own the place. Every time I sneak in, I delete it off the tape. These robberies are going to make us rich. As long as no one finds out, we're in the clear. What? Sorry, I thought I heard someone. Aw oh, man, you're here to take my rent too? Tom, I'm really sorry. Listen, I don't want to talk about the office right now. Then let's talk about this. So do you normally steal people's clothes from the garbage? The real question is, do you usually answer the door in boxer shorts? Only for strangers. Yeah, Ned. So what's this all about? You were right about you stealing from the garbage? No, Tom, about the robbery. It was last night. No way, it was only me and Mr. Deeth last night. Because Mr. Deeth was the thief. What? After you left this morning, I went to his office and I heard him talking on the phone. I don't know who he was talking to, but he's definitely behind all of it. Then call the cops! I can't, there's no proof. He deletes everything off the tape. There's no record of last night at all. Then we need to get a confession out of him. Exactly. I got it. So I dress up as office man, right, and then sneak in through the boss's window. Tom, those windows don't open, they're sealed. No, 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 hear me out. So we loosen the frames with baby oil, right? Tom, you are a superhero. But it's my turn to be a superhero now. I need to face Mr. Deeth alone. Dude, no way I would let you do that alone. I've got your back. 
Just like college. Just like college, huh? All right, you could be the lookout. Okay, I'm cool with that. But if you're gonna be a superhero, then you need the right costume. Follow me. You got me a cape? No, they just had a two for one deal and I didn't want to lose any money. Fair enough. Spoken like a true businessman. Well, let's do this. Let's do this. Mr. Deeth, I need to have a word with you. Philip, what are you wearing? It's a souvenir from Tom. You'd be surprised how many of these things he has. Well, yes, he was quite a child. And I take it you are here to talk on his behalf? We know that you're behind the robberies, and I'm here to say you're not going to get away with them. Philip, there are many things that you do not understand about the real world. That's the same thing I used to tell Tom. But maybe the real world would be better if there were more people like Tom and less people like you. Philip, I've stolen enough money from this office that I will never have to work again for the rest of my life. By the end of tomorrow, I will be back in Russia, and you will never hear from me again. My tracks are too covered. What proof do you think you have on me? Well, maybe the proof that you just gave me? Oh, my boy, you have much to learn about the real world. Here is your first lesson. Not many adults like to be tricked. Phil, how'd it go? Did you catch him? You have interfered with me for the last time, Thomas. I will free Philip, but only under one condition. I want you to come to the office and admit on camera that you were the one that has been stealing from the office for all these months. Let us see what happens when office man is arrested for a crime he did not commit. Either that, or you will never see your friend again. Bert, I need you to call the police. Mr. Deeth has Phil hostage in there, and I need some backup. I don't do backup. But you need a pencil? What? You won't get away with this, Deeth. Tom might not be the smartest, but he wouldn't agree to your terms. You put too much stock in your friend, Philip. Well, isn't business about stocks? Now let Philip go. Not yet. I'm waiting for your confession. I'm not an expert deal maker, but we both know who the real criminal is here, and he's the one not wearing a cape. You know, in Russia, they did not call me Mr. Deeth. They called me... Mr. Death. Whoa! Do you honestly think the police will believe you? Your story about me, a successful businessman, versus you, a caped freak? It is just not rational. I really don't think the guy with the gun should talk about being rational. Ah! Whoa! Any last words for your friend Philip? Maybe some employee advice? Maybe just one piece of advice. Always carry a couple extra pencils. Let go. You little, you, you jammed it. Nice move. Where'd you get that pencil? Bert let me borrow a few. You okay though? How could I not be? I just got saved by a superhero. Yeah, I'm a superhero. Can I ask you one more favor though? Can you untie me? What do you have to tell me? I just came to say, the deal's off. What? But I had the money! You had the money. But your little gun show messed up a very good gig for us, Deeth. They'll find out about you too. No, they won't. As far as they're concerned. I'm just little old Bert. Understand? Hey, Bert, thanks for lending Tom those pencils. They sure saved us. I'm glad. You two did the right thing. Thanks. 
but I still can't believe Mr. Deeth did all this. Well, you never know who you can trust. Hey, boss. Hey, Tom, how's it going? You don't have to call me the boss, I'm still just Phil. You kind of are the boss now. I'm surprised Bert didn't get the job. He said he didn't want the pressure. Go figure. So you're ready for your first day back at the office? Totally, I'm... Oh no! What is it? I'm on a new alert list with the animal shelter. There's a whole family of cats stuck in a tree. I gotta save them! But I just promised you that I'd finish my paperwork. I'll, I'll stay, Phil. What are you talking about? Those cats need office, man. Go get them. I'll sit this one out. Awesome, I'll be back quick. I promise. Thanks, office boy. Tom, I already told you that's not my superhero name. It'll stick. Like I said, I'm just some ordinary guy. But even the most ordinary guy can be a hero. Don't worry, citizen, I'll get the door. Oh, my cape! I'm, I'm stuck! Oh.